What's up everybody, my name is Chris and today we are talking about small diaphragm condenser type microphones for indoor voice dialogue recording or more specifically for a new microphone that I want to use in this studio and I have a bunch of them here and I'm comparing them against each other, how they sound and all those things. However, I did think that that wouldn't be enough because it's really interesting to hear how those microphones compare against each other, especially considering their different price points. A quick disclaimer before we jump into this video. None of the companies mentioned in this video or in the videos regarding this series are sponsoring any of this. All of these tests are done because I'm looking for the perfect microphone to put overhead into my YouTube studio and also use in other kind of environments. For the most part, however, I'm looking for something that does reject the echo and room reverberance very well, does not have a strong noise floor, and of course, I also am looking to upgrade my sound. I'm not going to cover any instrument recording with these microphones since that is not what I'm doing. I usually only record pretty much always my voice as well as sometimes other people's voices. Now I also want you to know the environment that I'm doing all of these tests in and that basically is my YouTube studio. As you can see on the screen it's a fairly large room which has a lot of reverberance and echo. I've tried treating this room with the rugs on the floor as well as this kind of like sound blanket curtain that is almost separate the room into two halves. This is what you get and this is the environment that I am filming with. I do think that this is kind of perfect because it is an imperfect environment and to make those tests in exactly this environment I think makes a lot of sense because not everybody can fully treat their room and have the perfect environment. Additionally, I also think that it's important to mention that all of the recordings are done with the Zoom F6, the 32-bit float wave file recording in 48 kilohertz. And last but not least, the normalization of this video as well as the audio tests is done to minus 16 LKFS, which is basically the same as LUFS. This is done with loudness control in Isotopes RX8 and you can see the settings that I used on the screen. Now that we have all that covered, let's jump into the video. So you already know the purpose of this video, but what microphones are we even comparing here? Well, there are a bunch of them. First up, we have the Behringer C2, which comes in this nice plastic case. There are two microphones with one capsule each, which is a hypercardioid capsule. There are holders, there are wind muffs, as well as a stereo mounting bracket. This whole kit sets you back around 40 US dollars or euros, and yeah, it's the cheapest out of the bunch. Something to note is that both of these microphones feature a low cut filter as well as a minus 10 dB pad. However, those can only be used one or the other and not in conjunction. Overall, it is a very impressive set, great build quality, nice case, and now it's just time to compare it in terms of how it sounds. Next up, we have the newer NW410, and this one comes in this nice little case here, which is aluminium and plastic and all that. Then, of course, two microphone bodies, but this time we also have three microphone capsules for each microphone body. One capsule is a omnidirectional, one is a cardioid, and one is a hypercardioid. Then we also have those wind fluffs and microphone holders. These two microphone holders do not feature any of the adapter screws, so that's something to note with this kit. This kit also does not feature any of the features that the Behringer has in terms of low cut or minus 10 dB pad. What you get is just two microphones, very well built, a little sharp on the front, so it's hard to put on the wind fluff, but other than that, it's really, really good. Now, this one here sets you back around 67 euros, and in the US, I found it for 125 US dollars. The third one in the list is a T-Bone SC140, again, with a really nice case. And opening this up, we find two microphones with one capsule each, in this case, a cardioid pickup pattern. In the listing, it also is called a kidney pickup pattern. The stereo mounting bracket, two microphone holders, which in this case are these little spiders right here, which means that you have not as much of the handling noise and such things when you're using this microphone. There are also these two wind fluffs and these microphones do have extra features and in this case they have a minus 10 dB or minus 20 dB pad and also a 75 or 150 hertz low cut filter. This whole kit costs around 97 euros in Germany. One of the downsides 
parts of this microphone is that I have not found this specific kit in the US and maybe it's not available. Maybe you can bring it in with extra taxes and extra shipping, but I don't know about that. And I would gladly hear about it in the comment section down below if you know anything about that. Lastly, we have a tiny little wooden box, which is comparably small to all the others. And in this case, we have the Octava MK012. This is a Russian made microphone, very popular for a long time already. And in this case, I am using the microphone up here with the hypercardioid pickup pattern capsule. And this also comes with a cardioid as well as a omnidirectional pickup pattern. This kit also features a minus 10 dB pad as well as a microphone holder. Now something to note about this kit is I am not using the standard holder that comes with the kit. I am using something that also has some spongy cords and stuff like that for around 10 euros. And I'm also using a third party pop filter for this microphone that I found on Amazon. And I'm linking that in the description below if you wanna use that. It fits really nicely. Additionally, it's also noteworthy that this kit actually comes in different forms and this one here has three capsules and a minus 10 dB pad, but there's also a cheaper option, for example, which is the movie kit, which only comes with the hypercardioid pickup pattern. And that smaller kit costs around 190 euros and 230 in the US, I think. This here with the three capsules costs around 290 euros and 325 US dollars. Now, if you want to get this kit similarly to the newer, which has three capsules and two bodies, then you would have to spend around 530 euros and 600 and something US dollars. So this is a significantly more expensive kit, especially looking at those other microphone kits, which are sometimes 10 times cheaper than this one here. Now, as I've already mentioned, the whole video here is recorded with the Octava MK012 and the hypercardioid pickup pattern overhead mounted right here. Usually this would be positioned in a way that it is not in frame, but for the purpose of this comparison, I think it was a good idea to just have it there. Now with this variation in microphones, it is already kind of mind blowing that we even can compare these against each other. It feels kind of obvious that the most expensive microphone probably also sounds the best and also has the lowest noise floor. However, I was really curious to get to know how a 20 euro microphone, which is the Behringer C2, if you split the cost across those two mics, can compare to a 290 euro microphone just by itself. Now, I don't want to give you all the details about these microphones, their technical specifications, weight, sizes, and all of that again. For that, there are individual videos about each and every microphone, and I talk about those extensively. However, I have to notice a couple of things. First of all, I found it really mind blowing to see what kind of cases those microphones actually come in. And I actually wonder how much value is in the case versus the microphones themselves. And actually the most expensive probably has the cheapest box with this wooden one right here. However, I also have to say that I like this the most because it's the smallest one and that means I can just bring it into a backpack or another case that I'm using anyways. Because with those other cases, they're so big that you really have to bring them individually. But not just the cases are well made. The microphones are equally as great in terms of their build quality. All of them are all metal bodies. They have nice microphone grills in the front that don't give in any way. And the connectors are well made as well. Even the switches on the two microphones that have them are also really nice and click into place greatly. The one thing that might be noteworthy is between the two microphones that have replaceable capsules with their kits, the Octava feels a little thinner in the threading and also harder in its metal. I would still be extremely cautious with any of these microphones in terms of the undoing and replacing the capsules. However, I do think that the Octava would hold up longer there. Thirdly, I want to mention that with these microphones, it is similar to the camera world saying of the best camera is the one that you have with you. I would say the same for microphones, which is the best microphone is the one that you have. So if you can get the cheapest one here, which is the Behringer C2 and use that to upgrade your gear with not having a on-camera microphone when you're really far away from the camera, for example, that already can help you a great deal. And from there, you can then also step up again and again to different microphones. Now, most certainly you are going to hear a difference in the price going up, but there may also be some surprises packaged in there. Now I mentioned there's a playlist linked in the description below, which will give you all those individual reviews of those microphones. And there you will also find samples for each and every single microphone. But here we are going to compare specific use cases with all of the microphones next to each other. Now in the first test here, we are listening to the 30 centimeter test of me saying a quote by Marcus Aurelius. 
Now in this test, all of these microphones have the cardioid pickup pattern capsule mounted, except for the Behringer C2, which only has a hypercardioid pickup pattern. So let's listen in. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow, if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow, if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow, if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow, if you will keep digging. Now I was really surprised to even hear all of them together because in a way I couldn't even believe that a microphone for less than 20 euros would work to begin with. But if I have to give you some opinions and obviously this is my voice in my environment with my own opinions, my own ears and what I may like or not like, and I'm not necessarily looking for the flattest microphone that I can use in any other circumstance as well. I'm not really looking for that. I'm looking for something that sounds good for my own environment, for my own voice. So in this case, the Behringer C2 for me, it sounds a little flat. It also sounds like it picks up more of the room. And also I find it a bit harsh compared to the other microphones. The newer sounds a bit better in my ears. However, going over to the T-Bone, that one changes the game completely. It sounds deeper, it also sounds a little clearer, and it overall has a more pleasant sound to it. However, I can also see someone saying that the T-Bone sounds a little muddy, for example. Now going over to the Octava, I have to say that on the 30 centimeter test, it almost sounds identical to the T-Bone. And that's considering that the T-Bone is five times cheaper than the Octava. Now before we jump into the one meter test, I would love to hear your thoughts about this microphone test and of course also your opinion on which one you would choose even for my own voice here and for my environment. Which one did you find the most pleasant? But for now we should move on with a one meter test. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow, if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow, if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow, if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow, if you will keep digging. In this comparison, once more, I would put the Behringer C2 and the newer NW410 kind of in one box. They both pick up a fair amount of the room and also sound really flat. Similarly, the T-Bone and the Octava also sound pretty similar, but I have to say that I find the Octava has a bit more presence on the one meter distance. Now in the previous reviews of these microphones, I've often talked about the drop off in volume for each of these microphones as you move away from the mic. And that's pretty similar throughout. Some of these mics are more sensitive than others, specifically talking about the Octava, which picks up a little more sound even if you are further away from the microphone. However, you can also bring that up in post with all of the other microphones. Then of course the problem lies more in the noise floor of those microphones as well as your audio recorder to see how clean you can get the signal. But we'll have a look at the noise floor of these microphones in a moment. For now, let's have a listen on how these reject noises from the rear. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. With the risk of sounding repetitive, I would say these microphones pretty much sort themselves based on price, with the Behringer being the one that doesn't reject from the rear the most. However, it's also kind of unfair because the Behringer comes with the hypercardioid pickup pattern, and those are kind of known for picking up more from the behind. For the rest, the order continues. The newer sounds a bit better in terms of comparing it to the Behringer, the T-Bone sounds a bit better than the newer, and the Octava, in my opinion, sounds the best out of the bunch. Something to note, if you want to also listen to those other capsules and the side rejection of those microphones, then you would have to check out those individual reviews because there I also have tested all of those individually. Now with this comparison of how those microphones sound from the behind, I started to hear something different that wasn't necessarily intended to be found out in this test. And that was that the newer and the Behringer sound like they already start to bring up more noise than those other two, the T-Bone and the Octava. But that's going to be more interesting to listen in for in the noise test. But for now I have one more test, which is the overhead mounting and how they sound if I use them in this environment. 
One thing to note, in this test I used the hypercardioid pickup pattern capsule on all of the microphones except for the T-bone because that one only has the cardioid pickup pattern. The reason I'm using the hypercardioid pickup pattern capsule here is because I found that they sound the best in this environment when I have the curtain wall up. I will make a video specifically about how my room sounds with this curtain wall and without this curtain wall and also how different capsules are used in that environment, but for that you'll have to stay tuned and subscribe to the channel. But now let's jump into the overhead mic comparison. Dig deep within yourself, for there's a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there's a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Now in this test I find a clear winner for myself, but starting with the Behringer, that one I find really harsh and sharp, then the newer already does a little bit of a better job. Jumping over to the T-Bone, that one adds a bit of presence and also a couple of the low frequency, but the winner to my ears is the Octava with the hypercardioid capsule in the overhead mounting. Now I'm not really sure if this is because I already fell in love with this microphone kind of before I even purchased it and listened in on other people's reviews and if that's just me being blind to the facts on the table. So I would really be curious to know what you think about this specific comparison in the comment section down below. Maybe at this point I have to mention that throughout this whole video you have listened to this microphone in the hypercardioid capsule without any equalizer or anything like that. So I have not removed any nagging frequencies, I didn't even try to look for them. I'm just using straight out this signal through the F6 and then just normalize that to minus 16 LKFS. And I'm really happy with that result. Now of course you can always work with equalizers and other effects even with those other microphones. You can do a lot there, but with this sound out of the microphone without anything else, I'm really blown away. Now I'm sure not everybody might like the sound of the Octava on their own voice. For me personally, I feel it gives me a bit of more of a presence in the low end, which I may not have when I normally speak. And also that's the difference that I noticed when comparing it, for example, to the Rode VideoMic NTG, which I'm also probably going to make a video about that comparison. But it's kind of what I found with this mic. I find it more pleasant to listen to, specifically since I have the curtain wall with this capsule and microphone setup. Now before I give you my final thoughts on these microphones, it's time for two more tests. One is the RF frequencies and then we have the noise floor test. Starting with the noise floor test right here. As mentioned before and with the risk of sounding repetitive, I think they pretty much sort themselves based on price once again. The Behringer and the newer again bunched together, they have a very electronic and also very present noise floor to my ears. It doesn't really sound very nice. Then the T-Bone and the Octava, they both have a really natural and lower frequency sounding noise floor. And to me that sounds more pleasant and more natural. And in a way that's really helpful because it means that I don't necessarily have to do as much work in removing that noise. However, with the newer and the Behringer, the noise being much more present to begin with, it may also be much harder to remove this without adding any artifacts. I've mentioned this before specifically with the re-rejection of these microphones, but also if you're further away from the microphone capsule in the front, you'll always have to bring up the gain in post-production or in your audio recorder. And depending on which audio recorder you use, that might be including more issues and more self-noise of the audio recording equipment. So it's really helpful to have a microphone that has a really low noise floor. With these microphones here, I am recording into the Zoom F6, which has double AD converters and also a very low self noise in those AD converters. And that makes it a really nice and clean signal. But as you could listen in on, you still have those noises, even with the Octava and you always have that noise floor. But as you increase your budget and you start working with more and more professional equipment, you might be able to mitigate those effects. Now recording with the F6 here, I don't really want to know how the Behringer and the newer sound on cheaper or lesser quality audio interfaces or audio recorders. They have a good bunch of self noise to begin with and if you add to that a recorder that also adds a good bunch of self noise, I'm not sure that would give you a good result. 
Now, lastly, I have a test where I tried to see what happens if you have a phone call right next to those microphones. Now, for that purpose, I had a phone call on my iPhone and just moved around the phone around those microphones as they were set up. Now, I sadly forgot to hit record on my recorder for this test specifically, so you will see a black screen, but the noise still got recorded from the F6 for each individual mic. It's almost becoming a joke. The price is really the quality in this comparison. The Octava, however, clearly takes the cake, with the T-Bone being a good second place. Now, what do I take away from this test specifically? For the most part, I would say just don't have a phone call right next to your audio recording equipment, which is kind of obvious to begin with. But also I found that as you move away, the receptiveness of these kind of frequencies is much less. So as long as you're not really holding your phone right next to your microphone, you probably are fine. Now, what are my thoughts if I compare all of this together and give you my opinion on what you might want to buy? Now, to start with the cheapest option and the second cheapest option with the Behringer and the newer. Between those two, I would probably try to go for the newer because it gives me much more versatility with those different capsules. And to my own ears, the newer also sounded a bit better than the Behringer. Now, if you don't really need two microphones in a stereo pair, I would probably suggest the T-Bone with its kidney capsule over the newer set. In this case, the newer doesn't really come in a single version. The Behringer also doesn't really feature that. But with the T-Bone, you can get one of those microphones with its holder, case and everything for around 47 euros. And that, I would say, is a really good deal for the low noise floor as well as the good response with low frequencies that at least I really like. Now for the final pair, which is the T-Bone against the Octava, considering that you can get the Octava with the hypercardioid capsule for around 190 euros or 230 US dollars, I would probably still gravitate toward the Octava, but know that you could get the T-Bone for around 100 euros where you get two microphones or just for 50 euros where you can get one of those microphones and you would have a really good contender comparing it to the Octava, even though the Octava is five times as expensive if you want one of those high quality kits like I have it here. Now, having used and heard the Octava with its different capsules and with its characteristics and how it sounds in my environment and on my voice, I really can't send that one back. This one is going to stay in my studio and I'm going to continue using it for this setup. In the beginning, I thought about whether or not that may be the right choice and whether or not there may be actually a other one that might be better for me suited. Now, in the beginning, I actually thought that it might be the newer specifically because it features so much in one package. There with the two microphone bodies, the three capsules each, you could easily mount this for a two person interview using that indoors with an overhead rig and have invisible microphones on each speaker. That really sounded very enticing. However, I do think that I have to just save a little more and maybe at some point get a second one of the Octava kit so that I could also do that kind of setup. Now for my one person setup in this YouTube studio, this setup makes me really happy. I'm still happy that I made all of those comparisons because they were really fascinating. But at the end, even though my wallet might disagree, this one stays. Now, I hope all of these comparisons and reviews of these microphones were helpful for you. If they were, please give this video a thumbs up and also check out those other videos. That helps out a lot for the YouTube algorithm and it also helps for others to find this information as well. Now, if you have any thoughts or questions, please leave those in the comment section down below and I will try to answer them there or make a video specifically about them. Also, subscribe to this channel for more videos coming up and there are a ton about podcasting as well as the Zoom F6 and other topics like my YouTube journey. Now, all I have to say now is choose your microphones wisely, have an amazing day and I will see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.
Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging.